What's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker, and this is WP Water Cooler, episode number 329. Today, we're going to be discussing Composer and WordPress. Let's go around the room real quick, get everyone introduced. Let's see here. Dan. Dan, what's up, man? How's it going? Tell us about Hi. yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm Dan Walmsley, and I'm the uh, lead architect of Jetpack, the plugin, uh, and I work at Automatic. Awesome. Good to have you on. How about you, Cosper? Hey, everybody. Jason Cosper, a.k.a. Kurt Autoloader, a.k.a. Fat Mullenweg, just here to uh, talk about WordPress today. Awesome. Good to have you on. Say, how about you? Hi, I'm Say Reed. I make WordPress, teach WordPress, preach WordPress at Say Reed Media on all the things. So in the house. Manny, how about you? Tell us about yourself. Hey, how you doing, guys? I am a web developer based in Las Vegas, co-organizer of WordCamp Las Vegas 2019, our 10th anniversary, September 6th and 7th. So you guys most very welcome to come. And I'm here to talk about WordPress things. Awesome. Good to have you on. Steve, how about you? I am Steve Zangin. I'm the founder of Zeek Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress Meetup. Allegedly. What? That's my one. <laughs> Sorry, I stole it. I stole I, it on purpose. I'm I'm so I'm so not used to saying this because it's so fresh, but I'm also a co-organizer of WordCamp Long Beach happening October. Look at you. Look at you. What, 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 what? I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me at Jason Tucker on Twitter. My website is jasontucker.blog. I do this show as well as another show called WP Blab. We recorded yesterday and it was it was awesome. We had Jason Resnick on. If you haven't met that guy or seen any of the stuff that he does, he does some really cool stuff. So make sure you go over to that website and go take a look at it at wpwatercooler.com. I, I saw that's I, WP Lab. Yeah, it's fun, huh? Well, I saw that show it. last night. It was good, man. Yeah, it's thank you. That's, I, I didn't know about that. It was a good one, man. I downloaded it. It's pretty cool. Nice. Well, thank you very much, very much to uh, ServerPress for making this all happen. We appreciate them. Go over to their website at serverpress.com and you take a look at um, all the cool stuff that they have going on over there with Desktop Server and a bunch of other stuff, WP Site Sync and all that sort of stuff. So make sure you go take a look at that. So let's talk a little bit about Composer. Dan, how about you kick us off a little bit here with Composer, and then we'll, we'll let Steve uh, jump in in just a yeah, second. Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I'll, I'll try for like a five second description of Composer, and then and then why we started using it with Jetpack. Um, so Composer, which is at I think it's at getcomposer.io, is that right? Um, uh, is basically a package management system for PHP. Uh, if you've used NPM, it's very similar to that. They have um, you know, a package directory at packagist.org. Uh, you can run your own package directory if you want. Oh, that's right, getcomposer.org, right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Say. Um, and uh, you can declare that your plugin requires certain packages and it'll install them in a directory inside your plugin. And, um, and then you commit that all to Subversion and then you get to use all of these cool uh, open source tools rather than having to write them yourself. Um, so we decided recently that we wanted to use this for Jetpack because there are really cool things that we've built in Jetpack that we want to share with like other automatic plugins and the rest of the world. And moving some of those things into composer packages is a great way for other plugins to be able to consume them. Nice. Um, what were you using before? Well, we weren't really using anything before, but you know, so for example, well, like if we wanted to, um, like WooCommerce it all, actually- It was all just in its own repo. It was all just sitting- Right, in, it's all just a big monolithic repo. repo, like yes. a big flat kind of like, repo um which is fine that's how most plugins are built oh. yeah but <laughs> it's uh that's how most plugins are built but like jetpack is so big and it does so many things that there's actually a lot of cool stuff in there that we really wanted to share with with the community and with other teams at automatic and an example of that is woocommerce when you when you go through the the woocommerce setup one of the things you can do is you can set up um uh some online services that let you do um uh, pricing and shipping, shipping label printing and other things. Um, and in order to, to power that API, it has to load in the Jetpack plugin. Um, and that's, that works great, but some people don't want to necessarily load all of Jetpack. They just want that connection to the API. So, what? so this is a way of, all of Jetpack? What? this is a way of sort of, you know, maybe sharing the, just the connection piece or some other piece. Um, so that's that's a you know it's not a thing that's been finished yet, but it's a, it's an opportunity that that moving this stuff into connections uh, into packages actually affords us. Um, but the problem, uh, and this is a problem that faces the whole WordPress ecosystem, 
is what if one plugin Im embeds package version A and another plugin embeds package version B and you know they're not compatible and you know it's random which one of those packages gets auto loaded like maybe the classes have the same name the way PHP auto loading works is it's not isolated it just says I want a class with this name and the first time it gets that class that's the class and any other packages like never get you know loaded if they have the same if they register the same so class name so let's let's backtrack a moment because we see yeah. you, you gave a great definition of composer and I think that was awesome and it's almost actually yeah, it's, Wikipedia definition it's, it's, it's almost identical to what was in Wikipedia I thought he was reading <laughs> off of the Wikipedia <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 the Wikipedia. I looked on I looked on Wikipedia, Wikipedia uh, I looked up composer you need to look up composer the software because a composer is a musician who is an author of music. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the composer we're talking about but yeah we we you, flailed for about a month with that incorrect definition before we realized we needed the software we're like we're trying to resurrect mozart here and it's just not working this guy's hanging around waving a baton i don't know what to do with him yeah yeah we got to fire this guy he's not worth the <laughs> options the salary yeah. um and so i mean the beauty of composer is it, it it compresses the size of your repo because you're taking all that code out out of your repo and you're really just talking about one line it's going to pull in a separate package right yeah and so you really are modularizing your whole repo and you can separate things out and and if you have several plugins or repos or or or, or, or um, pieces of code that are using one package, they can all get updated at once. But back to your point, what you were saying is, if you don't update your packages regularly, you do run into problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Say, Say's dirty mind is working for someone <laughs> today. And she's got the giggles as well. She had the giggles on the pre-show, so we're just gonna deal with it today. <laughs> Yeah. So today's topic is actually she's laughing, she's laughing at the word package. Today's topic is actually say gets to giggle and or interrupt as much as she likes because everything I'm talking about is pretty boring. That's that's, uh, for the, record, that's, that's, that's the topic every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, welcome to water cooler. <laughs> And so Aaron, Aaron, our VP of engineering, introduced uh, uh, the concept of, of composer and packages when he came on board uh, three years ago, and it's changed completely the way we code and the way we modularize everything. And this way, what, we, what we've got is we've got a bunch of utilities that we've built for ourselves that we are common amongst all of our websites that we just put into a package and we update it once, and then we go through all the websites and we and we we update them. Now, composer is also built into our onto our uh, continuous deployment deployment system and so when code is getting deployed it runs composer right and so anything you know the last update we've done in composer just gets run automatically so the mm -hmm. again the repos the repos stay smaller because those packages are living elsewhere they're bringing all that code in externally yeah yeah and 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 that's an interesting point you raised because people actually use composer in three very distinct ways in wordpress mm -hmm. So um, there is a WP Packagist, which is, mm -hmm. hey, let's use Composer to version all of our plugins. And if you uh, actually, if you're looking at, if, if you're looking for it online, it's actually, I think it's W Packagist. Oh, W Packagist. Okay, yes. good. Thank you for that. <laughs> you're welcome. So w, w Packagist. W so, org. so that's basically saying, yeah, I want to use dependency management to make sure that, and, and, and you know, that all my plugins are within a certain version range uh, yep. and treat, or, treat my whole WordPress install kind of like a, you would treat like a, a, a node app with NPM or something like that. Um, and then there's individual plugins using Composer to, to manage their dependencies. And most recently, and very interestingly, the theme team decided to come out with PSR4 support. And PSR4 oh. is basically what Composer uses under the hood to actually find these, register these classes and find them and load them. And so it's a step towards core supporting Composer. Now, the interesting thing about, and, and so they ended up actually writing their own auto loader that's a sort of like Composer Lite for, for doing the PSR4 auto loading for, for themes. And they also um, published uh, a bunch of packages in GitHub that you can consume in your own theme and just reuse some really awesome. cool stuff that they've come up with so, in core. Yeah. So, 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 so why, so why is, is WordPress still running subversion? Right. Well, that's, that's oh, wow. uh, you went there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, I had to, I mean, I, get it. Oh. now, the, the, now the, I feel the, like Wiley e. Coyote running off the cliff and I'm just I, running in midair down. I know, I know, I know it's, I know, I understand it's, it's a, <laughs> tough, that's a tough migration, just but flip the the switch, the on GitHub. <laughs> yeah. Just flip so, the switch. Just, Oh, just turn on GitHub. Yeah. If, if, if the if, rest of the world, 
uh, is on Git, not, not necessarily GitHub. Right. Well, if you, to look at it a certain way, if Everyone. plugins become smaller and smaller and a larger percentage of what a plugin does is coming from packages, those packages can live on GitHub. And really the stuff that's in subversion is, is pretty, so sort of glue code in a sense, right? Um, or, it's, or it's built from stuff that's in GitHub. So, you know, you can see subversion as kind of the implementation detail of how we distribute stuff out to sites, but you, you can bake it, you can kind of put it underneath some scripts and not deal with it too much. I like that phrase, yes. implementation detail. I'm, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna include that. I heard it, I heard it too. <laughs> That's just an implementation detail. Can I ask a yeah. question? I've never, I've, never, I've never got a good answer from this, but what if you're inheriting a site that has used all this stuff? Like you, well, you log in, you're like, what's this, like, this composer that, stuff that's in here? What, what do I do so, with, like, how do you inherit that? Like, you don't so, have any of the base access to the base repos. You don't have any of that stuff. You just have like, here is this folder full of crap and how do I ingest this and then start working with it? So, so there's, another, there's another layer that I wanna bring up before you ask that question, right? Um, um, so we talked about WPackagist, right? But we're also running our own private packagist at, at Zeek, right? There's a, I, I, I forget the site, but there's, a, there's sites where you can open up your own, you can host your own packages, uh, your own packagist. And so if somebody inherits our code, they're not gonna have access to our private packages, right? So they're not gonna be able to get updates unless we, unless we allow that. Right, so that is a very good question. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's, now it's a great reason for everything to be open source. Yeah, yes. Last year, uh, oh, burn. Yeah, that's right. WordCamp that Brighton 2018. Mika gave a think. Uh, I think I'm almost sure is that WordCamp. She gave a the a reason why uh, WordPress was still running on Subversion. So I copied the link there for you guys. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. I was going to say, Jason, uh, I've inherited this uh, this site, this uh, folder full of crap. Like that is, in a way, uh, inheriting almost any WordPress site that you haven't worked on before. Oh, totally. Like, to be fair. Totally. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, composer, not composer, anything else. Uh, I, I think it's interesting as well, Dan. Um, I, I know that Rarst has been on the composer, like, you know, banging the composer drum since like 2013 uh 2014 something like that like yeah. so um I, I and i know that there has been um you know with with uh packages with uh things like that so um what was kind of the motivation for for jetpack to why now for, right. for jetpack to pick that up um yeah, so uh, there's there's a whole bunch of reasons. One is that having your code in packages is just a cleaner way to write code, you know. Um, and we have a lot of people, as you can imagine, collaborating on Jetpack from all over the company, a lot of different stakeholders. And it was a huge learning curve to learn all of Jetpack and it's all inter intermingled. But if someone's just working on the connection or they're just working on Photon and there's a package for that, they can zoom in there and that's where all the tests live. And that's, you know, you could do it with subdirectories conceivably, but it's actually really nice to be able to completely isolate a feature and even pull it into a toy plugin and iterate on it there before committing it back. Um, so it's it's just good coding practice to have modular code and and, and good like boundaries around your code, um, and then you know a, another another aspect is um, you know obviously sharing code between Automatics plugins and we just saw that we saw that happening more and more and we saw you know that that it was creating some friction and, and um, you know there's a lot of copying and pasting and that that can scale for a while especially if the needs differ and stuff gets forked but I kind of wanted to get ahead of that. And then I'm also just really excited about being able to contribute more to the open source community. There's just so much innovation in Jetpack in terms of how the UI is built and how the APIs work and, and just a huge amount of innovation locked up in there that I think like, and one example is even just the way that we particularly do auto loading is so interesting. Like Composer by default, the first time you load a package, it just loads that version and any other versions on your system get ignored. And so what we wanted to say was, uh, how about we do something one level up where we say, let's only load the most recent version. And so you can actually go on packages and you can get our custom auto loader plugin, which will version all of your packages. It'll make sure you load the most recent one out of all your plugins, as long nice. as they've adopted this particular auto loader. And that's an that we just really wanted to share with the community. And we think it could create in the plugins sort of uh, ecosystem right now, you basically have 
um, you can either innovate within your plugin completely, but there's no real easy way to share it, or you can use the existing composer stuff, which has this versioning problem, or you have to get something into core. And so as people are building out, you know, rich JavaScript UI frameworks and all these other things that we think that this could like composer with just a few enhancements could provide a great way of saying, let's get broad adoption for this thing and make the case maybe that it should be in core or at least have a way to share it that doesn't require that. Let's say service workers, right? Service workers is a great example. There's a service workers core patch, but until that makes it into core, you have this bootstrapping problem. Nobody's going to build on top of it, right? Because it requires you, that you, you sideload this other plugin before any of that works. Well, if that service workers core uh, proposal plugin was actually a composer package, tons of people could depend on it. And if more than one plugin in your, in your site depends on it, well, it, it all still just works because we've done this neat kind of versioning trick. Um, so I think it could really enhance um, innovation across the ecosystem and in a way automatic because we have so many plugins we are this interesting microcosm of the dot org directory <laughs> now, we have dozens of direct dozens of plugins and we face the same ecosystem issues at a, a sort of a smaller scale so it's an interesting place to incubate these approaches could, so could we also be working towards a, a more modular jetpack because jetpack is a pretty heavy plugin when you try to add it to a site, could be could could potentially y'all be working towards something that um, people only load uh, the components they need, only grab the composer packages they need when they activate. Um, um, a particular you know, I, it's 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 technically possible. Like we've proven that that's technically possible. I mean, I think the value proposition of Jetpack. Um, is that it gives you so much of the basics at the same time. And like, mm -hmm. we, might, we might change kind of which, which features we put sort of emphasis on. But if you can imagine what it would take to kind of deprecate features that might be used by a fraction of sites, well, that's still millions of sites. Um, and so we don't have any plans to kind of break things out of Jetpack, but certainly making making sort of um, making it possible for other automatic plugins to to bring some of the benefits of jetpack without having to sideload it will you know we'll 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 sort of relieve some of that um Does some mean, of that pressure uh woocommerce is going to move over to composer uh please. It's, yes please i mean maybe <laughs> um we now, you look like that's never occurred to you you're like oh. yeah <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to look, I, I'm actually not part of the Woo team. I mean, we've, we've had, certainly we've had tons of exciting like experiments with the Woo team internally. Actually, I tell you what, one thing that they've done, and this is actually super fun, is we built, we built a composer package. <laughs> okay, fun is relative, okay? Okay, this is fun for someone with my peculiar brain. Uh, so... So one of the things, one of the big challenges we faced with moving everything into packages is that we basically had to refactor almost every piece of Jetpack, right? So we had to basically move functions into different classes and rename them and put them on a different path and all this kind of stuff. And as you can imagine, there's tons of external code. There's tons of external code that actually calls into Jetpack, both uh -huh. from our plugins and other plugins and like modifies its behavior or whatever, right? Yeah, so how do you... How do you make sure that when you're moving all this code around and renaming stuff and changing functions, you haven't broken anything? So we actually built this uh, code analyzer that uses the PHP parser library, which mm -hmm. somebody's helpfully put on, on GitHub. And it parses all the code in Jetpack and looks for declarations. Every function, every, every public function, every public class, every static method, um, and every um, static property of a class anything that could be what we refer to as like, a, well, everything we call a declaration. And then we look at all the external open source code in the universe, which is basically like everything in the plugins directory and everything in the themes directory and everything in automatic. And we say, well, what are the invocations? Like what are the invocations? So like every method call, uh, every sort of class reference, every function reference, right? Um, every reference to a static property. And then we map those two onto each other and say, given the declarations in Jetpack version X, and the declarations in Jetpack version Y, what has changed, what things invoke it, and therefore what will break when moving from version X to Y. And so, and that's, that's cool. it's so, so um, we basically parsed uh, the open source WordPress universe and found every plugin that would break when we upgraded Jetpack. That's Damn, awesome. what is that? Where's that list? Yeah, it's really. inside the Jetpack directory. It's called Jetpack Code Analyzer. It's on packages.org. You can use it for your own projects. Did you notify uh, those people? 
Uh, no, you, just, you know what we did actually. That for is your we, own. What we did is we. That was, did that was last week's topic. Well, that's, a, that's <laughs> an interesting question because, um, you know, if you discover breakage between when you you know you're going to break something when you bring out a new version of your plugin, and everyone faces this, right? Um, what do, what do you do about it? Do you tell them, and then they've got to put a version check in their code. They've got to say, well, I'm going to do it this for that version of that plugin. I'm going to do this for the next version of that plugin because they've got to make it forwards compatible all of a sudden. It turns out the best thing to do is to introduce a compatibility layer in your own plugin where you basically have a, you intercept that method where it used to live. And then you, so, so sometimes it's a file. So put an empty file with a deprecated file notice. Sometimes it's a, you know, a, a, a class static method that's now an instance method. So intercept it, instantiate the thing, and then throw a deprecated warning. Um, so you, you introduce a compatibility layer into your own thing. And then each new version, you check and see whether everyone's converted over their dependencies on your deprecated methods and you start to eliminate them. And because we can parse every line of open source code in the universe, like we, we, can, we can know when it's safe to start removing those methods. And so we can no, you did not well. notify them. You only <laughs> we did, well, we have, passively yeah. notified them if tune, they went tune, as much. Tune into last week's at, episode. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I mean, at this at this point, we we didn't need to notify everyone because we essentially did our very best to ensure nothing was going to break. Just, like literally, every method yeah. that got changed had a had a, um, a, a a compatibility layer introduced for it, so that so that we could just deprecate stuff but not break anything. Nice. That was all. Right. Yeah. So, um, so this serves as notice to all the plugin developers. Yeah. Yeah. You're, You're on notice. Go check. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so that could uh, that could also be used for if you make a popular plugin that someone is going to be creating an add-on to. Right. That those add-ons can then be notified in some way exactly. or however, saying, "Hey, so at, thing's using the old version, you should probably use a newer version of it." Yeah. If you look at LearnPress or WooCommerce or any of these things where there's like a core and there's like a, 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 a you know a big ecosystem of extensions. Um, this gives you, as a, as the author of sort of like an infrastructural plugin, the opportunity to to understand how, as I evolve my core, what what extensions am I going to break? Um, and so that's that's um, something you know, people can reuse it today. It's in Jetpack. There's a packages directory in the Jetpack repo. You can go in there, see all the packages. There's a code analyzer. Uh, it's got a full readme. It tells you exactly how to use it. So go go use it on your plugins. Go you know. Whenever you're about to release a new version, um, just just run it across anything that might depend on your code and see what happens. I want to mention two other quick things, Jason, before we uh, before we get to uh, wrapping this up. Um, there's another uh, uh, link I put in the um, in the chat called Status Press. Status Press is interesting. We were using it for a while. It's, it basically allows you to turn WordPress into your own packages, right? So if, if you don't want to use packages.com or packages.org, uh, you can host your own packages by using Status Press. Um, it's got some issues, right? Um, but uh, we, we did use it for a while before we got onto private packages. Um, and then one of the other things that we do um, with, with Composer, um, I, um, I want to mention is, it, it, all of our themes use NPM for um, compiling JavaScript, comp uh, compiling and minifying, minifying and purging CSS, you know, all, all that good stuff that we're doing with Webpack. And so we put that in Composer as well. So we have, actually have a line in Composer where when we run the Composer file, we can tell it to kick off the NPM process uh, at the same time. And that's part of our continuous deployment. That's cool. Yeah, get, getting that stuff working can be really funky. It's like, oh, at what point do I yes. run Composer? And what point do I run Yarn? At what point do I run NPM? What loads what? <laughs> it's like, uh, it's pretty complicated when you got JavaScript and PHP and, mixed up. And, and, and that's why I have people doing all that stuff. I don't understand. <laughs> So I no, really this is, this literally is, reading today we use the following items I, in our code. <laughs> I, I watch and I'm amazed and I couldn't do it to save my life. So this is a this is kind of a trend, right? The composer obviously jetpack moving signals a big, you know, like that's that's a jump. That's a that's a serious like well, commitment y'all are making to composer. And I know some um premium plugins like Yoast have added um, their own security keys so that you can use Composer and stuff. Is this something you see really becoming the direction of open source or just, you know, at least WordPress, like really Please. moving in that direction? Yes. It, Please. Yeah, <laughs> it, feels, it feels necessary um, for us to get to sort of 
for us to be able to iterate faster as a community, innovate faster, share innovations across packages. And there's a handful of problems to solve and we haven't finished solving them, but I think there's some interesting approaches in Jetpack. And of course it's on GitHub. Um, so you can go and look at how we've solved these problems and, and, and you can steal our solutions for your own plugin, see how it goes. Where's your list of problems? <laughs> I mean, you, you could just look at the game history right to here. see the problems, you know. <laughs> yeah, glaringly um, obvious. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, it's a good place to start is is the um, is the Jetpack uh, autoloader. Our autoloader package um, shows how you can, if you limit your function calls to after the plugin's loaded hook has run, then you can do all sorts of interesting things with versioning. And I think the next step would be to have uh, some code that runs whenever you activate or upgrade or disable a plugin that actually parses all the composer files, reconciles the dependencies and tells you if you have a, if you have a hard conflict, that is to say packages whose dependencies can't be resolved to a happy medium, but where those dependencies are in hard conflict and, and can't be compatible. If your packages uh, have a hard conflict, that's an issue. Hmm. <laughs> See that? Problem. I, I feel like I walked right into that one. Oh yes, you did. <laughs> Oh, uh, welcome to the water cooler. What are you about? <laughs> I'm just talking about composer. Um, and your package. <laughs> and hard complex. <laughs> yeah, didn't say it. <laughs> so yeah, so basically this is a trend. Everyone should hop on the trend because where Jetpack and Yoast go, so go WP. <laughs> Maybe. So go Woo. Yeah. Eh? Maybe. So can you do yeah, some we're look, Daniel, we're looking for you to lead, lead the way. Lead the way. I mean, uh, we all talk about how WordPress is going to be a Jetpack extension at some point anyway, right? So we'll <laughs> hold it into Jetpack. We'll do it in Jetpack. Yeah, so then it'll all be in Composer. It'll all just be a package. Just a bunch exactly. of packages. Exactly. The entire universe will turn inside out. Well, yeah. It's like Stranger Things. Yep, exactly. No, that's upside down. That's upside down. <laughs> that's upside down, yep. <laughs> yeah. well, that's down. about it, folks. <laughs> that's about it. I want to say thank you very much for all of you for coming on the show and hanging out with us. You know, sometimes we go super geeky and sometimes we talk about uh, like social media stuff on WordPress. You know, Steve, you remember that episode? Say, that was a, that was our, that our, was a our long best, time ago. Best, and I regret best episode yet. That. Best episode ever. <laughs> don't worry, we'll we'll circle back around to that one at some Please point too. Please don't ever mention that one again. <laughs> All right, guys, come on. Go over to our website over at dpwatercooler.com slash subscribe. That's where you can subscribe to this and all the other cool content that we have going on over on WP Watercooler's website. And uh, lastly, make sure you go over to uh, ServerPress's website. Um, desktop server's making some cool stuff, and we really appreciate their efforts for helping us out. Talk to you all later. You have a good one. Did Bye. he see all the other cruel content or cool content?